So, good morning. My name is Megan. Um, I am the office manager here at the Staten Island Small Business Development Center. I want to thank you for joining in on part three of our On the Web series. This presentation will focus on what, how brands win in moments that matter. Uh, it will focus on today's battlegrounds for all brands, some battle moments. You'll learn how to connect with con customers on mobile and make sure your business is there from the moment of looking to the moment of clicking, calling, or buying. This session is being recorded and it will be available for you to replay after the webinar. So look out for an email from me within the next day or so for a link to access it. Once this webinar ends, a brief survey will pop up in your browser. If you could please take about 30 seconds to fill it out, we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, there's also a box where you can fill in a suggestion of topics for future webinars, as this is the last webinar of the On the Web series with Google My Business. I look forward to hearing your feedback and coming up with some new topics to help you in your business. If you have any questions, feel free to type into the chat box throughout the webinar. I'll try to answer as we go along. Otherwise, I will answer all questions at the end. Um, I also want to apologize for any background noise as we go along. Um, today is our campus's graduation, so I will try to speak loudly to avoid any outside noise. So let's get started. So there's a new battleground for businesses working to build their brands online. Google likes to call it micro moments. Today we're going, today you have to earn the customer's consideration and action moment after moment. Why? Simply because people are more loyal to their need in the moment than to any particular brand. It turns out many customers aren't brand committed anymore. 90% of smartphone users are not absolutely certain of the brand specific that they want to buy when they begin looking for information online. So the upside or the downside, depending on how you look at it, um, is that all businesses get a shot at their competitor's customer. Did you know that one in three smartphone users purchased from a company or a brand other than they intended to buy from just because of the information that was provided online in the moment that they needed it? By being there, your brand has the chance to address customer needs in the moment, helping move someone along their decision journey. So the rise of mobile. Um, it's important that brands appear on every device a consumer uses in the moments that matter. These are called micro moments, as I had mentioned. Um, they're critical touch points within today's consumer journey. When added together, they ultimately determine how that customer's journey ends. They are the moments when the customer turns to a device to take an action on whatever we need or want right now. These are the I want to know, I want to go, buy, or do moments that are loaded with intent, context, and immediacy. Micro moments happen on any device, but more often than not, they happen on mobile devices. So did you know these averages? We check our phones about 150 times each day. We spend 177 minutes of our, on our phones each day, and each mobile session lasts about 70 seconds. Um, they're pretty short, but they happen dozens and dozens of times every day. About 82% of all smartphone users say they consult their phones on purchases they're about to make in a store. 91% turn to their phones uh, for ideas in the middle of a task. Mobile conversion rates increased about 29% in the last year alone. 68% of smartphone users say they check their phones within 15 minutes of waking up in the morning. And I bet some of you have already checked your phone in just a few minutes that I've started talking so far. So Google makes these connections across the United States. Um, Google fa facilitates the connections between c consumers and the information they're looking for. These connections help businesses by connecting customers at the moment they're searching for a uh, product or service. Our search and advertising programs help millions of businesses connect with potential customers. Website publishers earn money from their online content and nonprofits gain more donations and volunteers. If you're interested, you can check out Google's Economic Impact Report, which describes Google's um, impact state by state, including stories of how local businesses have benefited from utilizing the web and Google tools. Um, also, at the end of this, there will be some resources that I will be able to email out to everybody who's attended so far. So, 
Google's Let's Put Our Cities on the Map program. I will cover this section in detail in the second portion of this webinar. Um, it could be a review for some people who have already joined in on these sessions, but it definitely is important information in the battle of the moments for your competitors. So now that we've covered uh, micro moments, the importance of mobile, and how Google can help you make these connections, let's head back to today's focus, building your brand online. I'm going to introduce three high-level strategies to help your brand succeed online, on mobile, and in moments that matter. Strategy number one, be there. First, you've got to anticipate the micro moments for users in your industry, and then commit to being there to help when those moments occur. Your presence can drive brand awareness goals. Think about moments that potential customers might benefit from information on your site. What people want to know, where do people want to go, what people want to do, and what people want to buy. Studies have shown that you can increase unaided brand awareness by 6.9 percentage points, or by 46%, simply by showing up in mobile search ads results. More than half of smartphone users have discovered a new company or product when conducting a search on their smartphones. Ultimately, showing up gets your brand in the game to be chosen, not just to be seen. I do see that we have a hand raised. Um, let me, if you can just hold your question just until I finish. Actually, let's see, I can unmute um, Janelle. Janelle has your hand raised. I can unmute you now. Um, actually, Janelle, you are self-muted. There you go. Um, okay, Janelle, I'm sorry, it's not working out, but if you can type your question into the chat box, that would be appreciated, and I will definitely answer that for you. Um, so to continue along, um, So here's a case study on, on Fiat. Fiat had used this strategy to grow their business before. Um, Fiat left the U.S. market in 1983, returning in 2011 after a 28-year absence. The company faced established competitors and decreased brand loyalty across three generations of consumers. To drive market share and brand awareness, the company decided to pursue a search strategy. First, it bid competitively on specific branded keywords such as Fiat, Fiat 500, to connect with people already looking for their brand. Additionally, it bid on broader category keywords such as small car, compact car, and city car, just to get the attention of new customers and undecided shoppers. The study resulted on the total brand awareness increased 11.5 percentage points when a Fiat search ad was present. The top of mind awareness on mobile increased about four percentage points when Fiat appeared in the top sponsored position. And there was a 120% increase on year to year sales between 2011 and 2012. So it's definitely important to understand the keywords that people will use in order to search for your business. Strategy number two is to be useful. You have to be relevant to consumers' needs in the moment and connect people to the answers that they're looking for. 51% of smartphone users have purchased from a company or brand other than the one they intended to because of the information provided was useful. 73% of consumers say that regularly getting useful information from an advertiser is the most important attribute when selecting a brand. Consumers gravitate toward brands with snackable educational content not brands giving the hard sell. When a brand's mobile site or app makes it easy for a smartphone user to find answers, 69% of those users are more likely to actually buy from them. In the case of the I want to go moments, consumers are looking for a connection to the physical world. 71% of smartphone users say they've used a store locator to find a store location. And more than 100 million hours of how-to content have been watched in North America already this year. 48% of smartphone users are more likely to buy from companies whose mobile sites or apps provide instructional video content. Which brings us to our next case study. 
Um, in the last webinar, we spoke briefly about unboxing videos. This is where a product, this brings a product-driven focus, normally presented by some type of online influencer or celebrity, um, or just somebody entertaining, where they can unveil, un, un reveal the products. Um, this is a different focus. It's more of a how-to approach. So Unilever is um, now the number one hair channel brand on YouTube. They had realized that the online demand for hair information wasn't being met by beauty brands. They used search term data to predict hair trends and consumer behaviors. Bloggers for this company, um, All Things Hair YouTube channel, created new content with consumer intent and context in mind. They provided simple, credible answers to consumers in their I want to do hair care moments. The result is that they did become the number one hair brand channel on YouTube within 10 weeks. Within a year, the channel had gotten over 50 million YouTube views. So if your business is some type of service business where you can create how-to videos, it will be very beneficial for you to try and explore that option. The third strategy is to be quick. They're called micro moments because mobile users want to know, go, and buy swiftly. Your mobile experience has to be fast and frictionless. 29% of smartphone users will immediately switch to another site or app if it doesn't satisfy their needs or if it's just too slow. Of these, 70% do so because it takes too long to load. 67% uh, will switch if it takes too many steps to purchase or get the desired information. So it's definitely important to have a website that has good mobile speed. Google offers a free tool to help. Uh, it's called PageSpeed Insights. There's also a site called um, I believe it's test my, test my site, uh, thinkwithgoogle.com. Again, I'll have these links available at the end. So again, we want to eliminate the steps and anticipate the needs of your consumers. For example, 1-800-CONTACT, um, in an effort to serve their, cu their customers better, built a mobile website. The number of mobile devices accessing it grew by 57%. The new site included a click-to-call for ordering on mobile devices, touchable content for selecting products, larger text, announcing the different product names, drop-down menus that limit the need for extensive typing on smaller screens. The result of this increased their conversions by 24% on mobile and boosted their average order value on mobile by 8%. Another example is how Zillow implemented a GPS-based search feature on their mobile site and their app um, in order to allow house hunters to find listings nearby in just a few taps. The result of this was that more homes were being viewed per session. So just by raising a hand, how many of you have already done um, something like this for your business? Where you've already converted your, um, some of your sites or your online call to actions by mobile. Okay, so we have at least five of you who did that, um, which is a good start. So key questions. Consider the most searched topics for your brand or category. You want to grab your mobile device and try those searches. Are you there in the listing and do you like what you see? Are you being ranked within, say, the top five searches when you um, plug those in? Um, or are, are you only there at the bottom of the funnel where people are in buying mode? What is the key action that you want customers to use um, when they're on your mobile site or the app? How long will it take to perform it? And in just a few minutes, um, it'll be time to streamline. Which functions on your mobile site are, are absolutely and positively essential for your customer? What do you already need to know about your customer that you can help for anticipate their needs? So some of these questions are very important in order to mobile optimize your site, figure out what you want listed front and center, and how you can go forward from there in order to um, maintain your customers 
and also build new customers. So as we mentioned, we want to capture the moments that matter. Um, the I want to know, go, do, and buy moments. At this point, I will take some questions, and then the next section will focus on how to set up your Google business account and go through the details of your business listing. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and type them in. Okay, we will start to move along, um, and I will take the questions as we go. So as we mentioned, um, some stats already, um, the importance of connecting and the moments that matter. 80% of consumers use the search engine when looking for information about local businesses. 76% of people who search on their smartphones are looking for something that's in a business nearby and will visit within a, within a day. So getting your business on Google for free. Um, in order to show up in the prime spot on Google Maps and on Google Search, um, you can simply start by searching for your business. GYBO.com slash business um, is where you can go in and enter your business's um, name in the city in order to see where you appear. So go ahead and click on check my business. Um, well, I'm sorry, find out and this is how you can check your business. So this triggers a diagnostic report that tells you whether or not your business can be found on Google. Here are three possible outcomes. The first example says, nice job, you're on the map. This is that, uh, where you can update your information. Um, and it means that you already have a business listing and somebody is um, operating on Google My Business for you. The second is that your business info is there, but it might not be correct. So you need to verify your account. So this could mean that maybe enough people have searched for you, or um, something along those lines, or that your website is strong enough where Google has located your business, but it's not verified yet. So the, um, the hours could be wrong, your website could be wrong, and these are definitely important to keep up to date. The third option is that your business is not on the map. You could be brand new, or it could be a new building, a new development. So you definitely want to get um, your business information on there. You will need a Google account. If you already have one, you can go ahead to sign in, um, or you can create an account on the bottom. Um, Google accounts are free. So once you go ahead and do that, um, the second step is to select your business or add it if you have not been found already. If you see a list of businesses, um, you can scan the results to see if yours appears. If it does, you can click, click on it and this skips you ahead one step. You won't enter business details, you'll immediately be asked to confirm your business. Um, if you need to make changes to the information, don't worry, we'll show you how to do that once you confirm the listing. If the business does not appear on the list or you don't see any options, you click the link labeled, let me enter the full business details. So once you go ahead and start entering your business details, um, some of the guidelines is that your business name must, ma must match the legal name. So nicknames or slogans, um, cross streets, those should not be included. You definitely want to pay attention to the spelling and capitalization. Um, little things like that are important when you go to search on Google. If your business has multiple locations, um, you do not want to add the differentiators unless they're part of its legal name. You should enter the, um, the complete official street address. Don't include the little details so like the cross streets. Um, you can add the suite or office numbers on a separate line and P.O. boxes are actually not allowed. Um, I'll go into that in a second. You will need to select the category for the business. You can start by thinking of a category you'd like to use, start typing a few letters, and see what options appear below. 
For example, on this screen, um, it's a bakery. So once they started typing B-A-K, you can go ahead and continue if you're a regular bakery, if you're a supply store, wholesale, or if you're specific to, say, weddings. If you can't find the perfect category, just choose something close because they do keep it general when you do searches. So as I mentioned, you cannot enter a PO box. Um, many, uh, so say you work from home um, or um, something where you don't want your exact address to be shown, you can select that you are a local service area business. Um, you can click on the bottom of the page where it says, I deliver goods and services to my customers at their location. You click on yes, um, and you'll set a service area. You can define the service area by adding cities and zip codes or specifying a radius. So keep in mind that the service area is intended for a local presence on Google Maps. It's not a way to advertise, um, even if the business ships um, in other, you know, locations across the United States, for example, um, you, the radius should only reflect a local area. If your business has both a service area and a storefront, you can click on um, the box labeled, I also service customers at my business address. This allows both to show up on Google Maps. Once you're done, um, you click on continue, and you can confirm your business. There are a couple of ways to do this. Um, they can, the, the kind of old school version is um, that they mail you a postcard. This does take longer because it goes by mail. Um, sometimes it gives you an option to call. Um, you can enter a phone number, um, and you can uh, call straight from your office or wherever your location is. Um, but the easiest option is to do it with a Google representative. So as um, I mentioned, the SBDC is a partner with Google. We are a trusted verifier. So you can do this directly with an advisor here at the office. Um, for example, it shows you on here that we can just scan the QR code and get you verified. Um, there's also a link. Um, so if you're in the process at home or if you're already verified um, or in the process, you can go directly to, oh, I'm sorry, it's not on there. Um, there is a verification link that I will send to you, um, and it does it on the spot. So like I said, it's a lot faster to do it that way. So moving forward, um, once you have everything set up and verified, you want to make the most of your listing. So here's an example of what it looks like on a mobile phone and also on the web. Your listing can include all the, the important details of your business, such as the operating hours, your website, um, and of course your location, and a brief description. Google also allows you to do a virtual tour. So aside from just adding photos of your, say, your storefront or your service or, or your, your products, you can do um, a virtual tour created by a trusted photographer. And the last part is to read and respond to reviews, which is definitely important for your business standing. So once you're logged in, you're going to create your business, you're going to complete your business profile. You can click on edit, and you can go ahead and edit all the little details that are important. This is also the screen that it'll look like. Um, so we'll use the hours for an example. You can go ahead and click on the little pencil to edit your hours. So say you're open Monday through Saturday from 8.30 to 5. You can go ahead and do that directly. Um, say on Saturdays you close at 2. You can edit that part as well. You can also show your holiday hours. You can edit this ahead of time. So here's a great example. We just celebrated Memorial Day yesterday. Um, I know for myself over the weekend, I needed to go and get my glasses fixed. So I went to Google, and it showed that my local shop was open. So I headed over there to find out, only to find out that they were actually closed for the holiday. If I was not a returning customer, I would have been a lost sale for them. On the flip side, I was also looking for a new place to get my hair cut. So I looked up two local salons, and it did show, in fact, their updated holiday hours. It showed um, 
as you see right there in the green, holiday hours, that showed the verified listing that they were closed or that they closed early that day. So once you add your regular hours, right underneath it is special hours. So ahead of time you can show what your, um, what your changes will be. Managing your photos, um, you, there's two options, manage the photos and add the virtual tour. So if you just want to upload your logo and maybe your storefront photo, it's very simple to do. You just click on add one now and you upload the different photos. There are definitely more tools to access from the dashboard, such as insights and reviews. If you are looking to advertise your site through AdWords Express, um, you can get started directly from there. That's something I'm not going to cover this time around. But if you do have questions, you can definitely send me an email. Um, Google Plus is where you can share updates and respond with reviews. Um, it's definitely important to respond to reviews in order to keep, um, you know, show, it shows that you're active. And if someone says, say that they don't have a very favorable review, you can go in and respond to it, and it will kind of help you justify something that they said in order to uh, not deter other people from reading it and avoiding your business. The insights are important. Um, insights and analytics are two separate links, actually. And that shows you the different um, the views, clicks. It'll tell you how many people have um, clicked on your website or clicked on the maps for directions. Um, it'll go by 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Um, it's definitely important information as you go along and grow your business. So say you are not the only person who's taking care of your site. You can add managers to help. Um, you can choose a different title to limit their access. You know, say you only have an intern so you don't want to give them full manager um, capabilities, you can do this in order to help spread the workload. And once you're done, um, you can always go back to this listing by going to google.com slash business. You log in and you'll be able to access to your screen, um, as I showed you before, in the edit mode. And once again, as we said, everything is mobile. So you can download the app to um, access your business listing from your tablet or um, your cell phone and keep things up to date all the time. Um, if you do need help going through this process and would like to use the expedited verification form, please be sure to send me an email afterwards and I'll help you through it. We plan on doing an in-person workshop um, in either Staten Island or in South Brooklyn where we cover. So if you are interested in attending, definitely send me an email as well. Google has provided generously um, a bunch of free giveaways, um, so it should be a great event. I will be sending out the details and a follow-up email as soon as we have that information. Here are additional resources. Like I said, I can send this out to everybody interested. Um, it covers the Let's Put Our Cities on the Map program, a guide through micro moments. Um, I briefly mentioned the Google Economic Impact Report, Page Speed Insights Tool, Mobile Friendly Test, and the Expedited Verification Form. So if you are not able to come to the office to sit with an advisor and go through the process and you want to do it on your own, you can expedite your verification through that link. And I want to thank everybody for joining in. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and raise your hand or type in the chat box. I want to thank everybody for listening in. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions, you can always send me an email, make an appointment to sit with an advisor. Um, and afterwards, a brief, brief, brief survey will pop up. So if you can, um, if you can please take that, that'd be great. Um, yes, I can pro provide the email address. Um, it is right there on the screen, megan.earns.csi.cuny.edu. Um, I will send it to everybody in the chat box so they can also copy and paste it through there.
Do we have any other questions? I know we kind of went through this a little, um, a little briefly, but I think we covered all the important parts. So I know we're definitely early on time. Um, also, if anybody has um, a business who needs to do this and they kind of want to do a little run through, you can send me um, in the chat box the name of your business so I can see for an, an example of how it will appear um, if you're already verified, things like that. I will leave this open um, for any more questions for a few more minutes. Um, you're very welcome to Ashley and the others who are writing in. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. So I will not end the webinar as of yet, just in case anybody else wants to ask a question. But um, once again, there will be a survey that pops up afterwards. And I will send out a follow-up email with a link to the recording and anything else that you guys need in terms of the resources. Okay, at this point I'm going to stop the recording, but I will still take questions if you have them. And again, you can send them directly to my email as well. Um, and I want to thank everybody for joining in.